Hey guys, today's video looks like a mess so far, don't it? <laughs> now today's video is one of the different ways to splice wire. I'm going to show you a couple uh, unusual techniques. The soldering and the uh, crimp and the wire nut, which is pretty much your standard method used most often. But I'm going to start off with the most unusual. It's called the Western Union Telegraph Splice. You don't see, see or hear of it too much anymore, but uh, it's a real good splice. If you ever need to splice a wire that's going to have tension on it, the first example I can think of is like an electric fence around a garden or something. You need a real good connection, this might be a good way to do that. For that, I'm going to use this 12 gauge copper wire. Okay, I'm going to take two pieces of wire here. I'm going to hold this in the middle. It's kind of tricky if you ain't never done this before. I'm going to try to do it by hand without a tool. But you just take this one. Start wrapping it. This ain't gonna be the best example, but to get the point across. That's why I'm using bigger wires so you can see it better. It's best to wrap it closer together than this, but what I'm doing, it's good enough. And take this one. I'll try to get this one wrapped a little closer. Kind of looks like barbed wire in a way, don't That's essentially it. Get these crimped together. And you could, you know, run on, dump one down, and make it stronger. Uh, this is spaced out a little further than what it should be. Let me try to get that a little closer. Okay, guys, I'm going to use a propane torch to make this solder real, make this solder work better, and speed up the process a little bit. You can use a soldering gun if you prefer. This is rosin core solder I'm using. If you use acid core, it uh, don't work as good with electrical soldering. This solder's a little, little small for something this big. And the trick with soldering, you don't want to, like in this case, you don't want the flame to be what's melting the solder. You can see the wire itself is what's melting. This has been tested by NASA and several other tests. And they say when you splice it like this, the splice is stronger than the actual wire. Like if you're going to do a strength test on this, the wire itself would break before the splice. That's how strong this is. And this solder don't want to flow out the best because it's so small. If you had a thicker solder, you'd be able to get it built up better. But for video purposes, this is good enough. Let it cool down, we'll take a closer look at it. And like I said, if it had a bigger solder, a bigger gauge of solder, it would uh, build up better than this, you see. About the best splice you can do, really. That's why I wanted to show it first. And on telegraph wire like that, it'd be common to see a T-splice. That's what this would be called. It'd be coming off of it like this, feeding another line. That's a real strong splice too. Okay, our next splice. I'm not sure what this one's called. I call it the overlap solder method or something like that, that's what I call it. Take two pieces of wire, and this is 12 gauge wire again. And now we're going to solder this. I'm going to put this up on a piece of metal so I won't catch this wood on fire. Propane torch, it don't take very long to get it hot enough. You just kind of see how it's changing color with the flame. It usually means it's getting pretty hot.
Okay, here in a minute after it cools down, I'll flip it over and see if the other side needs soldered on it. Okay, here it is after I got it done. What I ended up doing is putting it vertical like this. I can get to both sides there and let it flow in real good. I didn't show it on camera there, just speed the video up a little bit. And that's a real strong splice right there. Okay, this next one is the most common solder splice. You just twist your two wires together. Most people think this is the strongest solder method, most strongest solder splice, but it's been proven that it's not. And my theory is when you're twisting that wire, you're weakening the metal. You know, like how you take a piece of wire and keep bending it back and forth and it eventually breaks. You're putting a lot of stress on that wire right there when you do this. And the only reason I'm soldering each one is just to show you. I started to skip this one to show you what it does afterward, but I love watching the solder go back down into, I call it the threads of the slice. So I figured I'd make a, show this one in the video too. And some of the strangest things interest me. See how it just flows right down in there? Okay, so that's pretty much all the solder splicing I'm going to show. And this is, I do this all the time on smaller wire, like a stranded wire. Uh, but you'd use a soldering gun on that. Okay, so you're working with pretty small wire now. This is, I'd, I'd guess, about a 18 or 20 gauge wire. What this is, it's stranded, as you can see. And there's two ways you can do this. You can either tin the wire first, which is get it hot and melt some solder on this, on both of them. Then do this, twist them together like this, then solder it, which is what we're going to do in this, just to speed it up a little bit. And with soldering guns, most people think you melt a big glob of solder on the tip and just stick it on there, and it's not the proper way of doing it. The proper way of doing it is heating the wire up. When you touch the solder to the wire, the solder should melt. Now you can get by with doing it like this as long as you work the solder in. And that's about all you need to do. The only reason you tend to wire first is it makes it makes the solder flow out better. So that's all the soldering methods. Uh, Show four different methods here. Western Union splice, back to back method, that might be what it's called, and your regular rat tail splice soldered method. Okay, so I got two pieces of 12 gauge wire again. You strip back about an inch, three quarter inch to an inch, about all you need to do. This is the most common splice you'll see anywhere. Uh, just a rat tail or pigtail splice, what it's called. Most of the time you hear it called a pigtail. Just get your wires twisted together real good. You can do this for more than two wires too. Just get them twisted together real good like that. Like I said, this is the most common splice you'll see and just put a wire nut on it. You'll see it everywhere. <laughs> All over the place and anything and not a thing wrong with it. This is for something that's not going to be under a lot of stress. Like there ain't going, you know, you're going to be pulling it like this. This is just going to be sitting in a junction box like that for the next 50 years. So, <laughs> if you need to do a stronger splice, you use one of the other methods. This will probably be the last method I show because I'm running out of ideas and I can't find any other way to do it. This is a butt splice. What this is called, I guess, because the wire butts up against each other in it. But you get it in there, you crimp it. Crimp it like that. And 
can get the other wire coming in there. A little trick on this type of crimp connector, if you're using a smaller wire, it's too small, you can fold the wire over, kind of like this. That way it simulates a bigger gauge and gets you a better crimp sometimes, but in this case I don't have to do that. You'll see this a lot in automotive applications where people adding stuff to the vehicle or something. And it's not a bad splice. And if it's going to be in the condition, this is the same as wiring up. If it's going to be outside or on a vehicle, you can take like some clear silk and, and fill up the inside of this. That keeps moisture from getting in there and corroding everything up. But that's a pretty good splice method there. There's other types of crimp connect splicers too. There's, I've seen blue ones that you can hook up to three wires in it. And they work similar except it has a plastic thing that comes down on top of it. When you push that down, you can use regular pliers that sent, it shoots a piece of metal down inside there like this and it penetrates the wire like that. So that works pretty good too. And there's a lot of other methods too. You can, you can use like a quick disconnect terminal both ends slide into each other and that works pretty good too for something that's going to be taken apart again later on or something but well guys i guess that's about it this video is a little longer than i was planning on sorry about that but hope i covered everything thorough enough thorough enough on it and if you got any questions leave a comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so thanks for watching